Can everyone, can you, can you see the screen? Sure can. Yeah, I think we're Absolutely good to go. Perfect. Awesome. Well, I, well, thank you very much, and I appreciate everyone's time today. I'm going to make sure to keep us within our, our time constraints. Um, what we're going to talk about today is is probably a little different than you would typically think of, of life insurance. So it's it's kind of a single premium play on a, on an index universal life. And we're going to show you some features and some, some design features within one of our policies that, that really, really make this come to light. So we'll, we'll jump right into things um, first and foremost. Um, this is our, our disclosures page. Um, the, these disclosures do apply to this presentation in its entirety. If you do want a copy of the presentation, you can either uh, reach out to me directly or to your representative at IMS, and they'll be able to get you a copy of the slides um, from from today's call. So uh, we want to look at this, um, you know, as a really as a way for you to generate an additional revenue stream for your for your agency. So what I mean is, you know, we talk about Index Universal Life. If you're already selling it, or if you're already selling life insurance, um, you know, variable life, whatever it may be, we don't want to really, you know, draw away from that business um, to to write a different product. Um, this is a, a whole different concept. This is something that um, you know could be an additional um, in addition to what you're currently doing. So again, we want to look at you know the client that's that's sitting there that has some money uh, potentially sitting on the sidelines that they don't want to put at risk. So they're not they're not willing to put it into the market. Uh, they want to make sure they have access to the funds. So you know liquidity is potentially a concern, um, and they want to make sure that they're getting the best bang for their buck. So uh, when we look at the you know fixed interest rate, the safe money type environment that's out there right now, um, we're in a pretty conservative um, marketplace. You know, there's there's a you know fairly low interest rates. You know, historically low in in a lot of scenarios. So we're going to look at some some different strategies that you can use that can really you know accomplish all those goals for the client um, and still provide that you know potential legacy for the beneficiaries. So we're going to jump right into it and we'll go through our our agenda here briefly. Uh, we're going to define smart money. You know, what does that mean? You know, it, it could be you know a different terminology that you've you've heard used in the past. Uh, we're going to look at life insurance as a solution. You know, really that's what we're we're here for. We're here to show you, you know, a, a new option that you would have. You know, when you're talking with your clients. And then we're going to go through some tips and talking points, uh, really briefly, just you know the whys and the hows of of how we can how we can accomplish this uh, with a life insurance policy. So first of all, um, smart money defined. Um, this is a you know money that the client would like to have access to. So so that's the first you know bullet point that we want to we want to look at, and then a limited exposure to loss. So when we're thinking about smart money and the different types of vehicles that are potentially available, um, limited exposure to loss is a is a huge um, a huge bullet for the for the clients. So we think about that. That's you know obviously eliminates you know anything that we would be putting the money at risk. So you know, mutual fund stocks, you know, anything that's that's market based. Uh, and that's again, you know, one of the one of the real, you know, pillars of, of what we're trying to do. Uh, when we when we think about smart money assets and, and when we're trying to define them, we want to look at some other alternatives that, that a client would potentially have. And, and annuities certainly falls into that. Now, you know, when we look at an annuity typically there's going to be some kind of surrender charges. You know, there might be some liquidity, you know, built in with Free withdrawals and things like that, but um, you know annuities will typically have you know a, a time period where they'll have surrender charges. So you know that could be you know one area where there's it's, it's a, a little more gray. Uh, money market accounts, savings accounts, uh, the recent windfall or, or inheritance, you know those are all areas that you could look to you know as far as you know kind of uncovering the assets that might be available for a smart money sale. So when we think about a money market account and a savings account. You know, one real common theme there, and what we talked about earlier, is that rates are pretty conservative. You know, you're not getting a huge, uh, huge tax bill every year from your um, from your savings account. There's just not a lot of interest being paid. Um, it's obviously a great, you know, safe vehicle. There's liquidity there; you can get at the money, um, but you're, you know, probably not going to see a, a great return uh, on those funds. Um, Another another objective, and this is this is really important, is is transferring the money to the to the beneficiaries. So when I think of a you know a perfect smart money client, it's somebody that needs that you know life insurance protection. You know maybe during their working years, a lot of these clients are going to be you know towards the end of their working years. But really, the estate building um, is is a key key um, you know focus. So when we think about 
some more money. You know, obviously we talked about the access to the funds in case of an emergency, uh, but we also want to want to have you know the opportunity to to transfer that wealth from generation to generation and transfer that um, in the most efficient way possible. And you know, a lot of times the smart money asset is is sitting there, you know, maybe in you know a bank CD or a savings account, with the idea that we want to have access to it just in case you know for those for those emergency situations. But our real end goal is to pass that along to the to the next generation, and we're gonna you know really show how we can we can be really efficient in in doing that with the with the smart money concept. So again, um, access to the funds, and and what would the need be? You know, a case of an emergency, uh, an unexpected need. Future unidentified needs. Uh, you know, when I when I really think of what a future unidentified need looks like for a client that's you know age 50 to 70, you know, I kind of look at that you know the potential need to have somebody come into your home, you know, help you with you know some healthcare issues, maybe to retrofit your house, you know, for a for a ramp if you're if you're now you know in a in a wheelchair, you know, making the the bathroom more accessible. Uh, or maybe even, you know what, nursing care, you know, maybe need, needing to be in a home or an assisted living facility. And when we think about this product, and we'll talk a little bit more about this later, is that when we talk about leveraging a lump sum into a, a higher death benefit, what you're getting is higher access to our accelerated benefits, um, which we have critical, chronic, and terminal illness riders uh, or um, endorsements that are, are built into our policies. It's going to give you that additional access. Um, where we can really turn the you know small lump sum or the the smaller lump sum that we're putting in into a much higher death benefit with much more access for those um, future unidentified needs. And the final bullet point here is competitive returns. Uh, we're, we're talking about competitive returns on not only the death benefit uh, but the cash value as well. So we want to look at you know both sides of the coin and not just say, well, here's a great cash value vehicle. Um, or you can get this great death benefit vehicle. Uh, we're going to look at you know both sides, and hopefully we can you know knock off you know both of those both of those bullet points for the for the client. So now we want to look at what's our solution. So we've kind of identified the problem. You know the problem out there right now is you know there's not a lot of you know accessible accounts, liquid accounts that are really safe. Um, that provide the downside protection, you know, that a client's looking for, but also offer some some stronger, you know, even guaranteed rates, uh, but also upside upside potential type type scenarios. So we're going to look at a product called the Rapid Builder IUL, and the name, you know, really kind of defines this. It's it's designed to be our early cash value product. So the Rapid Builder means we're going to grow, you know, cash value rapidly. Uh, what we're looking at is first and foremost we need a client that has a need for death benefit protection. So the client has to be A, insurable, you know, um, you have to go through the underwriting process and we're going to talk about some some ways that, you know, we can help, you know, get them, you know, through that process and, and really talk, talk them through the process. Uh, they want early cash value access. Rapid Builder has um, no premium load. So if you're familiar with Index Universal Life, there's typically a premium load that comes right off the top. So the premium goes into the policy. There's, you know, a, a chunk that gets swiped right off the top. This policy does not have the uh, premium load. Uh, we also have a rider on here called the waiver of surrender charge rider that is going to do exactly that. It's going to waive all the surrender charges. So we're going to have some um, some great liquidity, you know, early on in the contract. Um, the client's also going to have access to the accelerated you know, death benefit portfolio that we offer. So, like I said earlier, critical illness, chronic illness, and terminal illness. Uh, are all going to be just built into the policy. Uh, they're going to be uh, a no charge um, addition. Uh, there would be some, you know, some discounting, you know, when they actually do accelerate the benefits. But that's, you know, kind of a, a separate, separate presentation. Uh, we don't want to get too far into the weeds. And then long-term performance opportunity for these for these clients, we, we're not only looking at what's the short-term, you know, opportunity, but long-term. You know, this is. Again, that asset that, that's sitting there, you know, potentially in a in a CD or a money market account, that the end goal is to leave it to the beneficiaries. Well, that might be 15, 20, 30 years down the road. Uh, what's the again the most efficient way to do that, uh, where we still have access to the funds, we still have the you know the emergency you know uh, availability of the of the debt benefit, uh, and and we're going to look at how the rapid builder IUL can really you know achieve all of these. Uh, of these goals for the for the client. 
So here's a, a sample illustration. Now, here's a scenario where we actually solved for a little higher death benefit. So we knew the death benefit needed the client was at least 500,000. In this case, we ended up solving for 508,000. Kind of dealt with the, the corridor amount that, that was needed based on the premium going into the policy. So we have here a 55-year-old male, standard non-tobacco. We've added the waiver of surrender charge option. Uh, and we're looking at a $200,000 single premium. So I think this is kind of your, you know, typical smart money sale. Now, obviously, this is, um, you know, cherry picked, you know, for the presentation. So what I would suggest is while you're, you know, listening to this and seeing these illustrations, is to write down a couple of client names, you know, some people that you think may be of interest to this. Maybe you did a fact finder for a client um, within the last couple of months, and and notice that they did have some, you know, quote unquote safe money. Um, that you really didn't have access to as far as the you know the the sale that you were working on went. Um, now you this could you know bring you back to them with a you know hey we have an option that it's, it's still liquid we're we're offering some some great um, actual performance and and giving the client some uh, some some additional options here. So as you can tell, um, our minimum account value the the guaranteed rate in our policies is two and a half percent. So we look at the far left hand column that's our worst case scenario. And, you know, a lot of people say insurance are Armageddon. That's saying that um, we as a company have come in and, and raised our expenses and charges to the absolute maximum and are charging the absolute minimum interest rate. So that'd be no index growth. I mean as you can see there's um, you know roughly ninety nine point nine percent of you know return of premium for the first year. And then it kind of dips down there as we as we move along. So our two hundred thousand um, dollars five years in have about $194,000 of liquidity. Obviously with you um, as their advisor, if, if we did come out day one and say, well, instead of the, the rates we were showing you, uh, we're gonna raise them up to the absolute maximums, you go in there and get that money out. That's what the liquidity's for. Uh, it certainly you know, holds us accountable to that. The middle, middle column is showing that same uh, guaranteed rate, so our 2.5%, um, but with the current expenses and charges. Um, so this shows you know, a more realistic you know, worst case scenario where the index just doesn't perform. You know, here's what the what the client's looking looking at on a surrender value basis. The far right count, hand column is our our uh, you know look back rate. So when we're we're looking at that, that's just the the project the historical rate that we're using. Um, in this case, it's 6.5%. Um, with this concept, you can really go back and and dial that back to you know, five, five and a half, six, six and a half percent, whatever you're comfortable with. And that's again, just conversation you can have with the, with the client. Uh, but when we look at the six and a half percent rate, a lot of times what we, um, the questions that we get are, you know, it doesn't really look like we're, we're getting the full six and a half percent. So obviously in that first year, our, our interest rate would, or our cash value would be a little higher if we took home the full six and a half. So we have a report that's built into our software called our internal rate return report. What this does is it takes into account um, the expenses and you know the actual net rate of return on both the surrender value and the death benefit. And this page here, I think, is a a great way to a great way to uh, you know really emphasize not only the interest rate that you're potentially going to get on the cash value side, but also what does this look like for your beneficiaries. You know, we're really looking at this as a a, a great wealth transfer vehicle as well. So we have our surrender value internal rate of return. You can see it's anywhere from you know 4.3 all the way up to you know about 5.2 percent, and that's uh, looking at a 30-year snapshot. But when we're talking to the beneficiaries, the real value to them is obviously that death benefit. So you look at our far right-hand column here; it's showing our death benefit internal rate of return. And you know, as you can see, you know, even 30 years down the road, we have you know just under six percent um, internal rate of return. Now, when we talked about those future unidentified needs, a, a real benefit again to this page, you know, as a selling point to the client, is you can take a look and see what the death benefit looks like, um, you know, on those future dates. So we, we look at our accelerated benefits. We're not basing those benefits off of the applied for death benefit. It's off of the death benefit at the time of the first claim. So again, we go out 30 years. Um, at age 85, you know, maybe a typical time for somebody to uh, to need some some in-home care or, or, or nursing care. Um, and you look at our chronic illness rider, you're going to be able to get 24% of the million dollar death benefit that's there on an annual basis. Um, you know, that you'd be able to to use, you know, for those for those.
those benefits. So again, take a look at it, the time of the first, you know, of the time of the claim, not at the, the time of application. So we want to look at that death benefit and how much it's grown um, based on the design of the, of the product. So this is our first scenario where we solve for a little higher death benefit. Scenario two is actually uh, another option that you have is where we can dial that death benefit down. So instead of solving for $500,000 up front, we're solving for $300,000. Same client, same premium going in, and, and now you can see our, our guaranteed column, so our far left-hand column here is showing uh, return of premium. Um, you know, this is, you know, showing out to 10 years. It's going to go, you know, even beyond that, but it's giving you that return of premium. That's guaranteed. Um, and the middle column is actually showing some, some really, you know, positive growth, even based on that 2.5% minimum guarantee. In the far right-hand column, uh, now we're looking at, you know, even a little stronger, um, you know, returns than, than we saw, you know, illustrating the same exact rate. And when we look at our internal rate of return report now, um, it's, you know, a little more upside, you know, as far as the, the surrender value internal rate of return, uh, but our, our bottom end is, is even higher. So I think our, our lowest um, surrender value IRR here is, you know, at about the 10-year mark where it's 4.75%. So again, just a great talking point, you know, for the, for the client. Another option that we have, and, and I know that, that IMS has some great um, illustration, you know, um, optimizers, so they have their retirement analyzer and some of those things. Uh, we also have built into our software is our, our link to Innsmark. So it's going to actually extract the information from the illustration and bring it into the Innsmark software. And you can then do some comparisons. So now we look at this scenario and, and we look at what does a 2% you know, a money market you know, account look like compared to the, the rapid builder? What is an annuity at 3.5% or a CD at 3 and, and you're probably thinking those rates are, are you know, really high. But we could really show the client, you know, how competitive, you know, we really are. Even if interest rates do, you know, rise, which, you know, hopefully, you know, we see some, some better um, safe money alternatives out there in the, in the marketplace. Um, but if that does happen, you know, we're, we're still really competitive with what, you know, the, you know, the quote-unquote competition is doing. Um, as you can see, our year-end surrender value um, 10 years out is 318. Uh, we're at just under 250 in the in the CD at 3%. We're at about 260 in the in the annuity at 3.5. About 230 in the in the money market at 2. Um, I looked at rates, you know, prior to jumping on the call in a you know money market right now. Um, maximum, you know, on a national average is paying um, under 1%. You know, just just shy of 1%. And that's including all of the uh, you know the online online banks and things that are that are out there. So again, it's just a it's just a real nice additional you know piece that you can bring and show to your client you know that here's here's what we look like compared to you know the alternatives that you have in, in the marketplace so when we look at this and we look at life insurance as the solution you know for the client's smart money money needs we have to ask the question where the client's needs met you know I think leaving the benefit to the heirs we looked at that internal rate of return report and you know having that you know, alternative death benefits. So having that leverage death benefit on the on the single premium really does provide uh, a really competitive way to transfer that money from the you know current client to their to their beneficiary. So I think we can put a check mark there. I'm having access to the funds with the waiver of surrender charge option. Um, the client has you know full liquidity, so they're able to go in there and get that money uh, whenever they want. You know, if they do have a, an emergency that comes up or they need you know the cash value out of the policy. It's available for them. Competitive returns, again, leading back to the internal rate of return report and also to that Innsmark illustration. When we compare this with the alternatives that, that a client has for, you know, their safe money for their for their current safe money, we are um, extremely competitive. You know, when we look at the the look backs, and again, you can dial that interest rate back if you want. And if you're not comfortable with six and a half percent. Um, you can certainly certainly move it back a little bit, but you know I think we're when we we talk about competitive returns, you know we certainly did um, you know check that check that box as well. So now um, briefly we're going to go through some some tips and talking points. I just want to hit you know hit some of the high points. So we want to look at these contracts and the and the question you're probably you know sitting there thinking to yourself is how can we put this lump sum in and you know still you know lower that death benefit as low as we did. And that's um, 
we're, we're purposely making this a Mac. So that's something to think about. We're actually using the cash value accumulation test, which allows us to drop that death benefit down um, as far as you know equal with the premium. And I'm going to show you in a couple of slides here just a, another way to run this, kind of that third scenario that we can use. But we will have a modified endowment contract. Um, in this scenario, um, you can kind of treat the distributions from the policy. So if you were to take money out or to you know access the funds, it, it's going to be similar to an annuity. You're going to have uh, that last in, um, last out kind of a, a scenario. So you're going to actually be pulling you know interest out. So we want to look at another um, benefit. So uh, again, lump sum. You put a lump sum into this contract. You know, a lot of times you don't want that you know one starting point, one ending point that you're you know constantly looking at year in and year out. So we have what's called our systematic premium allocation. What it does is it takes the the lump sum. So in this case, the two hundred thousand dollars, and it spreads it out into you know basically twelve equal premium payments. It gives you twelve starting points, you know twelve ending points. Now you're going to have you know a little bit of a, a dollar cost average when it comes to you know what you're you're looking at on an annual basis um, when you're looking at your annual statement. Again, just gives you some, you know, uh, a little bit of, you know, flexibility when it comes to, you know, the premiums going into the account. Uh, this is something that you could have done previously. You could have put 100% of the money into the fixed account, and then actually just called in every month and said, I want to move, you know, one twelfth over into the into the index bucket. Now this is a, a situation where we just do it for you. So you put the money in. Um, and you select the systematic premium allocation, and we'll actually just bleed that money into the index accounts. And the final bullet point, you know, one, uh, you know, very important to the first two illustrations that we looked at, the waiver of surrender charge option. It again, it waives all the surrender charges on the contract. What it also does is adds a table shave to the to the contract as well. So now uh, we're able to shave from table three up to standard. Um, so again, it opens the door a little bit for that um, client that's a little. You know, nervous about going through the underwriting process. Maybe they, you know, do have some health concerns that you've identified. This does open the door and then gets them, you know, into the into the product. You know, a little a little easier. It gets that table three up to standard. So we're gonna we're gonna waive some of those some of those additional charges. Uh, we do have some different commission options, and I'm not gonna you know go too deep into this, but we have a, a heaped option. We have an, a heaped option with an asset trail. Uh, we have a percent of premium, so that's gonna look a little bit like the uh, an annuity commission where you're just getting a lump sum based on the, the amount of premium going in. And then we have an asset-based trail. So again, just take this chart for, for what it's worth. Um, one thing to look at is uh, the commission chargebacks so on the bottom. Um, there are, because it's there's liquidity to the client, um, they, there is some commission chargebacks. It ranges anywhere from um, two years on the option D commissions to five years on the option C. Uh, and the and the range is you know 100% year one all the way down to um, you know 25% year three for options A and B, 100% years one and two, um, all the way down to 40% in year year five, uh, and then 100% year one, 50% year two. With that being said, we do have a, a free withdrawal. So typically you think of a free withdrawal as a you know a surrender charge free withdrawal for the client. I mean this scenario the client's able to take up to 10% per year. Where there's going to be no commission chargebacks for you as the, as the advisor. So again, this 200,000 are deposit year one that could take 20,000. Now, something that you you know typically don't see is that it's cumulative. So if you don't take a withdrawal year one, year two, you'd have access to uh, 40,000 in in our example. Year three, 60,000, so on and so forth. So it gives you a, a little bit of flexibility for those emergency situations where the client does want to does want to draw some money out. Um, some Tips and talking points. If, if you noticed in all the illustrations I ran, I used our non-guaranteed alternate rate. Um, I set it at two and a half percent. That is our what we call our true up rate. So our two and a half percent is our you know contractual minimum guarantee that that we offer, um, and I it automatically will populate in the far left hand column, which is guaranteed column. Middle column you have to enter that in. Um, it will default to our fixed rate, which is 3.75 percent, and that's something you can choose anywhere from the two and a half up to the 3.75%. You can enter that in if you want to show three, if you want to show the fixed rate. It, it's up to you. We usually show the uh, 2.5%. It gets the client a little more of a, a visual on you know what the worst case scenario is. If the policy never performs, what um, you know what you know kind of floor do I have? 
Um, and then another option, and I'll, I'll show you a quick illustration here, the no waiver of surrender charge option. So we talked a lot about the waiver of surrender charge and how it you know, makes the, the policy you know, more liquid for the client. But it also adds the commission charge back um, for you as, as the advisor. So when we look at this, we can actually, if the client doesn't necessarily need 100% you know, liquidity day one, uh, we have uh, a nice option. You can actually run it without the waiver of surrender charge. Now, you're not going to get the table shave, uh, but you're also not going to have um, the chargebacks. It does open up some more of those commission options for you as well. And as you can see, you know, we really still have some very strong um, performance. So on the, on the non-guaranteed side, our far right-hand column, you still have a surrender value at the end of year one of 204,000, um, year two of 215. So, you know, we're, we're not, you know, killing the client with, uh, with surrender charges. Um, in our non-guaranteed alternate columns, if you look at the 2.5%, you have a, a return of premium now, um, year three. Um, so again, if the client doesn't need 100% access day one, here's another option that you can show them. The policy will perform a, a little bit better, um, and, and our target premiums are going to be a little higher. So as far as marketing goes, you know, as far as putting you know, materials in your hand, uh, we do have some great marketing kits. These are available in either hard copy or electronic. I'm going to pull up just the electronic version now. So here's our marketing landing page. If you look, this is a smart money. It's got a video that you can use with your client. We have client brochures. We have case studies, uh, you know, financial objective guides, a lot of different material out here, uh, really easy to access. There's no um, password, so it's not password protected. So you can actually get at this um, very easily. It's just a link that you can get to. All of our concepts are available on this, but here's the, the look at the smart money. So just a quick look at that. I would, I would suggest if you haven't already seen it, take a look at that. It's really, uh, again, really great material, really easy to have access to. So in summary, uh, we looked at defining smart money. What, what does it really mean? You know, what, are we, what are we looking for? Um, we want to really meet the client's needs. So in a situation where you've already done some fact finding and you're, you know, you're with the client, you're, you're looking at some different options. If life insurance isn't your primary focus, this can be a great way to get some of that um, safe money off the sidelines and have an option, you know, for your, for your customers. Um, life insurance is a solution. Obviously, um, we're here talking about North American products, but there's, you know, a lot of, you know, applicable, you know, information from this that, you know, potentially would be, you know, able to be used with, with all the companies you're writing with. Um, you know, I would say North American does have a very unique product, um, and this is a, you know, something that not every carrier has with the waiver of surrender charge option, the ability to use the, the cash value accumulation test and, and solve for that, you know, low death benefit. But this gives you uh, certainly some, some options in, in that regard. And then tips and talking points. We wanted to really give you some design options, so not only with the waiver but without um, using that minimum uh, interest rate of, of 2.5% and really why we're doing what we're doing. You know, these are going to be modified endowment contracts. We're you know, typically going to add the waiver. Um, if it's a scenario where you don't need it, um, you can certainly leave it off. And then we're, you know, in these scenarios, we're going to be solving for our cash value accumulation test. So the bottom line you know, in our conversation, the client gets death benefit protection, first and foremost they're taking a, a lump sum and leveraging it into a higher death benefit. So that's a, a big advantage for them and their beneficiaries. Having the access to the cash value uh, in both scenarios, actually, in the, in the uh, scenario with the waiver and without, there's some, some strong you know, cash value availability there. Um, growth potential, you can't stress this enough. We're in a historically low interest rate environment, and you probably feel that on the annuity side. You know, we certainly feel it in our fixed rates on the life side. Uh, but certainly, you know, the, the client's safe money is certainly feeling that as well. Um, and we, we looked at, you know, actually read a couple of articles, and, and UBS did a study of their high net worth clients. And of their high net worth clients, uh, on average, they're keeping roughly 25% of their portfolio in a cash position. And, you know, if you think about that, they're probably doing it in case of an emergency, so they have access to the funds. Uh, but having 25% of uh, a high net worth client in a, a fixed account that's, you know, paying, what would we say, less than 1%, um, you know, maybe there's a better option. And there, even just for a chunk of that money, um, this is, you know, certainly a, certainly an option for them. You know, as far as the advisor, you get a smart money alternative. And we, you know, showed you some different examples of what the smart money, you know, typical play is. And a lot of times those scenarios aren't, you know, areas where you're going to, 
get paid a commission. This gives you an alternative that is beneficial to the client and also you know, offers you an additional revenue stream for your agency. And then you get the support and, and resources to help grow your business. And that's obviously with, uh, with North American, our sales team's great, but you know, I put an emphasis on, on IMS and how much they do for their, for their customers. Uh, obviously, you heard of all the programs that they're doing, whether it's uh, new agent incentives, um, referral incentives, you know, trip incentives, pretty much everything across the board. You know, it was uh, uh, it was great to hear that um, there's an agency out there that's doing so much for their producers and making sure that they're they're feeling appreciated. So I think you know when we look at next steps, think of some clients. You know, obviously, you know, everyone on the phone knows this. You're your business people, but identify three clients who meet the criteria. Uh, give them a call. See if there's a, an opportunity there, and and really, you know, lean on you know either myself or your um, internal representative at at IMS to to run some of these illustrations. You know, every one of us is is trained on that, and we can you know customize these. Like I said, the illustrations we show in this presentation are 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 cherry picked. You know, we're pulling a, a 55 year old male, two hundred thousand dollars going in. It's gonna it's gonna illustrate really well. Uh, what if you have a 65-year-old? You know, you want to see that, and maybe there's some different, you know, tweaks that we can make to the illustration. But come up with some clients, and really, you know, make this, you know, hour of your of your life, you know, worthwhile as far as, you know, so it wasn't just a waste of time. And we can really, you know, kind of dive into those cases and 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 see where we can help you. So with that, I'm going to uh, end my portion of the call. Uh, if there's questions, I believe we we're either going to take you know, live questions or, or type them in. So if, if anybody has questions, I'll, I'll turn things back over to times now and, and then I can, I can stand the line to answer questions. Great. Thank you, Andy. That was, uh, that was very helpful. Um, looks like we do have, uh, some folks that actually just had some uh, technical issues. So I, again, this has been recorded. Uh, so we will get this out to, uh, to all attendees here following the meeting once the recording is available. But uh, uh, looks like you did a, a pretty good job here, Andy. There, I, I haven't seen any Maybe, uh, I, maybe I put them to sleep. <laughs> I <laughs> don't think that was the case, but uh, all right. Well, uh, with that, I do have uh, one final. I'm going to go ahead and take control back for me here, Andy. Uh, Got it. All right. So, um, yeah, if there's any questions, we'll, we'll keep this open here for uh, a few moments longer. But uh, while you're thinking of any questions about, uh, you know, Andy's presentation, the smart money concept and, and using the rapid builder, uh, please type those in and send them over. Um, but here at, at this moment, we do have one final poll here I'd like to launch. Uh, just simply, would you be interested in contracting with North American? So uh, those of you joining us here today, uh, if you are not currently contracted with North American, uh, we can certainly get uh, our agent data packet out to you for our paperless contracting, as I mentioned earlier, uh, get you up and running with North American so you can uh, start taking this concept to your clients. Again, uh, a, a great way to uh, kind of leverage some of those uh safe smart money uh, strategies you know go so far as call it lazy money and, and really leverage those assets uh, a bit further there so um all right with that i still haven't seen any questions so andy i'm taking this as you did a fantastic job so <laughs> all right uh, i think we're going to go ahead and uh, get things wrapped up here we've got a, a few of you that responded to the poll if you uh wouldn't mind just taking a quick moment here to, to respond yes to that, and we can get some additional uh, contract information out to you. Um, but with that, I'm going to go ahead and, and wrap things up, and we can get along with our Monday morning. So hopefully everyone's off to a good start this week, and and uh, appreciate you uh, taking the time to join us this morning. Uh, Andy, thank you very much for, for taking the time to go through that as well. And uh, we will uh, be in touch. I'll be following up with everyone here. Uh, but with that, I uh, hope everyone has a great week, and, and we will be in touch. Thank you. Thank you.